Hey guys, my name is Drew Brashler. Um, I am with uh, Northridge Community Church. I'm going to be showing you guys uh, a video quickly today on using the gate um, function of the Behringer X32. Um, so I'm actually uh, running my computer over here on the right hand side um, with uh, Cubase. Uh, here, I'll show it to you guys real quick. Uh, that's a computer with Cubase. I just have um, a little bit of drum uh, stuff that we recorded, um, and I'm just going to be uh, using that to play back into the X32 using the X32 as the 32 and 32 out sound card, which is awesome. Uh, anyway, let me go ahead and pan back down here to the board, and uh, let's hop in. Um, so basically, I have uh, two tom mics, a uh, high tom and a floor tom, uh, and those are situated here and here. Um, and I'm wanting to, and, and I'll, I'll let you guys hear it, but there's a lot of bleed from the cymbals and the other instruments um, in the drum set into these microphones. And so these are kind of perfect examples to show how to use uh, the gate uh efficiently. So let's go ahead and start playing these and I'll, I'll plop in the uh, low cut and the uh, equalizer um, to let you guys hear how I have these things uh, EQ'd. So here are the high tom and floor tom. Um, and I have this set up as a loop on, uh, on Cubase so you'll just hear the same thing over and over again. Um, but let's go ahead and listen to the high tom and we'll plop in the low cut and the equalizer. So there's that, and we'll go to the floor tom next. So here it is with EQ now. There we go. So you can hear a lot of the cymbals in the background. So let's go ahead and kind of focus on the high tom right now. So. I'm going to go ahead and start with this gate. Um, basically, we go over here to the left side of the board, um, and we press the view button, and that pulls up the gate on our screen up here. And then you can um, initiate the gate by pressing the gate button. Um, and then we can adjust the threshold of where the gate comes in uh, with the knob over here. But the primary thing of uh, the gate is over here on the LCD screen. So let me go ahead and zoom in on that. All right, so with the gate, we're able to, let me go ahead and pause this real quick. Uh, with the gate, we're able to adjust the threshold here, and we're able to adjust how far the gate goes down um, in dB. So we can uh, vary this by rotating this rotary knob right here, all the way from 60 dB down um, up to uh, 3 dB down. But, so basically, this means that whenever the signal reaches below the threshold that you set, um, the... Uh, channel will turn down the um, the amount in the range uh, in, in dB. So if you have this set to 10 or 20, it will go down 10 or 20 dB. Um, now, the one thing to remember about this, the lower uh, you have this go down, the longer it will take to come back up. Uh, so if you have this set at, neg at 60 dB uh, down, um, and it's a really quick you know, thing, it will take a little bit longer to come up than, it, say, if you had it set at 30 or 20 dB. So I usually have mine set to 40. I find that that's a good, um, good range to have things dip down uh, beneath. And so then you have your attack, your hold, and release times. Um, and this allows you to vary how fast the gate clamps down on the signal and also how fast it releases uh, on the signal. So your attack is how fast it releases. Um, your hold time is how long the gate stays open after the threshold dips below that, uh, after the signal dips below that threshold point. And your release time is how long it takes for the um, gate to fully uh, cancel out the signal. Now if we go over to our layer button and press the next layer down, um, we now have a few other things that we can go into. So there is a key filter, um, a filter, and then a slope adjustable on that filter, and then we can select the key source. So if you were wanting to say, um, uh, tighten that or give your bass drum a lot more of a hit. Um, they do this in, in with uh, kind of R&B, like DJ type stuff. Um, you can 
put a 60 hertz signal into the soundboard and then have put a compressor or a, a gate on it um, and have a key on this. And basically every time the kick drum would hit, uh, the uh, 60 hertz tone would open and release that, that tone into the room and then cut off when it, it cuts off. So that's a, a way of using the key source um, to do that. Um, also, there's another version of this called a ducker that's also built into this where you can have your, say, your bass guitar and your kick drum are fighting. Um, and you want your kick drum to come through um, every time, but you want your bass guitar to be pretty loud. You can put a ducker on your bass guitar with the key source of the kick drum. Now what happens is then every time the kick drum hits, the bass drum will, or sorry, every time the kick drum hits, the bass guitar will dip down in volume uh, specified by your range. So if you wanted it to dip down six decibels, you go ahead and set this to six and go ahead and press this button so now you're on Ducker. And then you can go select your source um, on any of your channels. Uh, so say your kick drum is channel 13, you just go there and press 13. Uh, and now you can go ahead and, uh, and set that up. I'm not gonna show you guys that today. I'm primarily just uh, focusing in on the gate. So let's go ahead and start gating in on this uh, high tom. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this um, up to the point where we start gating in. There we go. So um, what we're going to do next is, is uh, using this filter that we have, I can actually go in and select where I want this gate to be listening to. Because we can kind of hear that some of the symbols are, are still kind of cutting in on this. Um, so what I'm going to do, you guys unfortunately won't be able to hear this here, um, but I'm going to press key solo and key filter. And what I can now do is I can vary where this is listening to. Um, if I turn this up here, maybe you guys can hear it. So now I can go and vary this to where it's listening. And then you can also adjust the slope and, and whatnot of this too. So we can make this a lot tighter. Oh, they also have high cut versions of it and low cuts as well. And here comes a hit and there we go. So there we go. So now we're just going to uh, hit key solo off so we can listen back to the channel again. All right, so that is a little bit um, steep of threshold, but let's see here. Let's go ahead and get this thing to uh, vary out a little bit more. So our attack is um, is going to be fast on this, and I'm going to hold this open for a little bit. It's not really attacking this drum very hard in this spot. Let's see here. Let's just change this. Sorry, just getting something set up here in Cubase to show you guys this a little better. All right. So basically what this is going to be doing, um, let's switch over to the floor, Tom. This will show you guys a little bit better. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, initiate the threshold by pressing uh, this rotary knob to make it active. And I'm having it duck down about uh, gate down 33 dB. Um, and with the floor tom, I kind of want that um, signal to kind of keep going out just to have a kind of a natural decay time. Um, so I've set my hold time to 89 milliseconds and uh, my release to... Um, 226 milliseconds and basically what this is doing is it's allowing that uh, 
that floor time to just kind of have that natural decay that it normally has. Um, and I'm not wanting to kind of gate it down so quick. If I was to take this and have it release really quick, it's just on and off. It's just, it's kind of real bad sounding. So, but if we make this a lot longer, say, um, you know, 1.2 milliseconds, this is gonna take a real long time. So you can kind of hear that gradually go down. So a, a good, um, so this is all gonna vary on your instrument, um, but this is just a real quick showing of how the gate works on uh, on the Behringer X32. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to give me, a, give me a message or whatnot. I know this didn't really go too in depth of how to correctly set up a gate, um, but really just trust your ears. Um, that's the one thing that I recommend for um, you know anything with sound wise. If, if it sounds wrong, it is wrong. And if it sounds fine, it's, it's fine. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'll also be posting a couple more videos on the, uh, on the Behringer X32 explaining some other things. So thank you very much for tuning in.